By watching the advertisements at the beginning, you can help me to continue to help you with these free informative videos. Thank you. If you want to find all of them, you just go to genesispc.com, click on videos on YouTube, and you will find all my videos on Excel, Excel VBA, Access, Access VBA. We have a database here that we want to protect from abuse. We are going to hide all the tables, so people can't open the tables directly. Uh, we are going to make the queries unchangeable, so people cannot change details in it, they can look at it. And the same with forms, they can look at issues but not change anything or add anything or whatever. And we do that all in VBA, so we also finally will hide the VBA code. Before we are going to do it, I want you to know that uh, these names are all messy. In general, I would recommend that you use naming conventions. Let's say TBL, customers, TBL, departments, I did not do that here. So that is inconsistent. Besides, I have spaces sometimes in names. In general, you should not put spaces there. But if you do, okay, we have to um, take care of that. And then besides, we have... Uh, forms with the same issue. Before we are going to do anything you need to know that there are many more tables than you think there are. If I right click there and go to navigation options I can also show system objects and then it will turn out that there are many more tables than you thought. These are all system tables. There are also many more queries than you thought. I don't have them here, but if you make somewhere inside a form a query with the query designer, then that is also a hidden query. So I'm going to unhide them again. But we need to know all of this when we are going to work on code. So I'm going to make a module with a VBA code. I did that already. When I right click there and I go to design view, you will see I had locked that code. So I need a password in order to unlock it. No one else can do that if they don't know the password. I use the password secret. So now I can get into the code. How did I do that? Tools. And then the properties of this database. I didn't rename it, so it's DB1 properties. You can change the name there, but I'm going to ignore that. Go to the protection tab, lock the project for viewing, type your password and confirm your password and then when you click OK it will be locked. I'm cancelling it now because I don't want to lock it. So how did we do all of that? First of all I'm going to start a function and then I will show you how all of that was used. So let me show you here what it does. If I use the shortcut Control shift l it asks me again for a password, secret, and now all tables, queries and forms are protected. You will see that there are no tables anymore, so I cannot open them. I know there are tricks to do that, but for a regular user it is locked. And if I go to a query, let's say the query customers, and I change the name of that person to Anderson, it does not let me do that. So I cannot change anything there. I cannot change anything in forms either. In this form, if I change the social security number there, it does not let me do that. Until I unlock everything. I can do that with Control shift u I will show you how I did that. Control shift u I ask the password again. If you don't know the password, you cannot unlock things. So now everything is unlocked and no longer protected. So if I change query customers again to Anderson, it will do all of that. But that could ruin your database if someone does that who is not qualified or authorized to do so. So how did we do all of that? Going to my module in design view again. 
I used a function, not a sub this time, because when I make a macro later on, I really need a function. So function, I called it lock changes. I declared a few variables. I also used O properties as a DAO property. Make sure you have under references the DAO library, Microsoft Active Data Objects library. That should be activated. Then I use the password question. If it's not secret, then you are not authorized and we exit the function. Again, people may want to go to VBA in order to see this, but we can lock that as I showed you. First we are going to hide the tables. We do that for instance with a for each loop, for each OTD, OTD is of a table definition type, in the current database table definitions, and then I told you don't hide tables that are system tables. So if the left of the table name, the four characters to the left are M, sys, then hide them. If you have naming conventions, you could have used this line. If the first three characters are TBL, great, but I was not consistent. So if I have a table that is my own table, then application set hidden attribute attribute to access table OTD name. And the last argument says hidden is true. It will do that for all the tables. Then we are going to do that for the queries. The queries are a little bit more involved. For each OQD in query definitions, again the same story. The system queries always start with a tilde, so you don't want those. Then set O property, which is of the property type, to the record set type property. If an error occurs, then we have to make, create that property. And we set it to the snapshot type. That means you can read it, you can look at it, but you can't touch it. And then we append that O property to the collection of properties. Else we set, if there is already a property set that way, we set O property value to 2. 2 is the snapshot version. 0 is the Dynaset version. And then we loop through all the query definitions. With the forms we have to use a different system. We have to say for each O form in the current project, not current database, current project all forms. If you do it from the current database you get only the open forms. The forms may not be open. So we have all forms. If the left, here I have to use a naming convention, we have to open that form, but make sure that you do that in design view, otherwise you cannot change property settings in the form, and make sure in the last arguments that you open it hidden, so you don't see all kind of things changing on your screen. And then we set to the collections of forms, the form with the name that we are talking about, to allow edits false. Then we close the form, and don't forget to save the changes in your design, where you chat set allow edits. You can also change allow deletions and allow additions. I le leave that up to you. And then we tell the user that now tables, queries and forms are protected. Then I did the opposite in the next function, unlock the changes, which is a complete copy of the previous function. So you just copy everything into here, except for five settings. I will show you which ones. This is all the same, but here make sure that you change true into false. Here make sure that you change snapshot into Dynaset. There make sure that you change 2 into 0, which is Dynaset record source property, record source type. And here change allow edits from false into true. And then you have to change the message box of course, from now on they are no longer protected. 
I told you already how you can hide your VBA code. Now we are going to create shortcut keys. We create an auto keys macro for shortcut keys. I use Control Shift L for lock changes and Control Shift U for unlock changes. So we go back to the database, auto keys, and we are going to look how it was designed. You create a sub macro. In this version of Access you can do that by double clicking here. In older versions you have to go to the top here and say I want to see macro names. And then the macro name you give it the name of the shortcut. Control which is the caret, shift is the plus and the L for control shift L. And then you do a function, a run code option. And the run code needs the name of the function that you want to run in VBA. And that is lock changes, but don't forget the parentheses. It's a function and not a subroutine. Okay. Then you add another sub macro. This one, control shift U. That's what I decided upon. Then again, the action is going to be run code. Function name unlock changes. So how did I get run code in there? If you would add a new action, you would go to run code and select it. I did that already, so I'm undoing that. And then, which is very important, when you close that macro, you have to save it under the name auto keys. That means when you close the database and you open it again, it will automatically run this macro auto keys. That means from now on you can use your shortcut keys in this database. So if someone wants to lock this, say U probably, Control shift l it will go through all the code and says what is your password. If you don't know the password you will not be able to lock it or unlock it. Can you go to the VBA code? No, for you can lock that too as I showed you. I'm cancelling this. So it will say you are not authorized, for you don't know the password. So now your database is pretty well protected. Is it completely protected? No. People who are very uh, advanced, sophisticated with access, they will find ways around.